Hello. Today I want to talk about the use of tools in forest schools. If I've chosen an activity that requires the use of tools, I always first check my risk assessment. When I do my risk assessment for this activity, I want to bring the probability of an accident occurring down to as low as possible. And there's a few ways in which I do this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect all my tools to make sure that my tools are all safe and in good working condition. Secondly, I'm going to check on the forest school area and make sure that the forest school is a safe environment to use the tools. Thirdly, I'm going to be looking at the correct PPE to use on the tools. And fourthly, I'm going to be giving demonstrations and a safety briefing to all participants before anybody picks a tool up. Okay, so I'm going to start now by giving a quick uh, safety briefing and I want to emphasize first the use of your safety bubble or your blood bubble. Your blood bubble basically consists of anything inside this circumference. Okay? Um, if anyone steps inside your blood bubble whilst you have a tool and whilst you're using a tool, it stop immediately and ask them to remove themselves from your blood bubble. Okay? Secondly, I want to emphasize the importance of treating tools with respect. Tools can have the ability to, to hurt you, so you, you always treat them with utmost respect and always think about what you're doing. Concentrate on what you're doing and let the tools do the work. Okay, so you've remained, you've got your blood bubble, your blood bubble's empty. The next thing you do is you're choosing a good environment to work with. Good environment to work with would mean no trip hazards or anywhere to slip and fall, nice flat, even surfaces. Get yourself a nice working surface or use one of the dollies. There's a few of these dollies dotted around in my forest school area. Dollies are fantastic. And again, stick to the main basic rule. No one's to be in your blood bubble whilst you're working, okay? First of all, I'm gonna demonstrate now the safe use of a pruning saw. This is a lock-in pruning saw, and the PPE that we're gonna use for this pruning saw are gloves and a dolly, all right? So before you put your gloves on, because you may find this difficult if you have them on, open up your pruning saw. Your pruning saw is a folding blade, so you unfold the blade, and then you lock it into position using the lock-in lever, okay? Then, place your gloves on, so, and what I want you to do now before you start cutting anything is make sure that your hands are crossed and what I need you to do is to have your saw in your dominant hand in your non-dominant hand I want to cross over the saw like so hold your hazel down onto your dolly and that gives you a safe position to cut the reason that I like you to use this stance is because if the saw bounces, it can't bounce on top of your non-dominant hand, like so. Okay, so always maintain this cross hand stance. Never push or pull on a saw. It will do its own work. That's all you need to do is guide the saw backwards and forwards and let the saw do all the work for you. So once your hazel is in a safe position, you've checked your bub bubble, make sure there's nobody in it. Begin to saw by dragging it first towards you and then pushing it forward. That's all you're doing is guiding the saw backwards and forwards. No pressure is needed. The saw will cut with its own volition. And just keep moving backwards and forwards until you've completed your cut. Once you've completed your cut, okay, then you need to put your saw in a safe place. So remove one of your gloves like so, unlock the blade, fold the blade back into position and put somewhere safe. This is basically uh, one cut, so I'm going to do another three cuts. I'll pause the video for the next three and these are going to, they're going to be my legs for my bench, okay? We'll see now. Okay, so 
I've cut myself four legs out of hazel using the saw. Place them safely out of the way somewhere that you're not going to trip over them. And I've placed myself a nice log on the dolly for my next demonstration, which is the handheld auger. Okay, so this is a handheld auger. Open the auger up, remove it from the case. You'll notice that the auger has a self tapping end, similar to the saw. This means that minimum effort is required once that, that actually bites into the log. I'm going to have a small hazel handle ready for, for the use of uh, this. This fits through there like so and allows a twist in motion on the auger, okay? Again, look for trip hazards and debris before you start using your auger and make sure that you have the correct PPE on before you, you commence any tool work. Right, with this auger now, I'm going to be applying a small bit of pressure until the bite is taken from the self tap in sack section of the auger. Once that bite is in, it's just a simple case of twisting the auger in a clockwise direction, like so, and letting the auger cut its way into the log. This again, no pushing or movement is needed. You're simply looking to twist the auger evenly with each hand, the self tapping section of the auger pulls it in and the blade does the work as you're twisting. So again, minimum effort, the auger will find its own direction and pull itself into the hole, leaving it quite simple and easy. Respect the blade though, it's still sharp. Make sure you still have your gloves on and Always be vigilant of somebody entering your blood bubble whilst you're working with tools. Once you've, you've reached the required depth, you're going to have to twist the other way now to undo that self-tapping se that self -tapping section of the auger. So five or six turns now anti-clockwise to release. Once it feels quite loose, place two fingers underneath the auger handle like so. Place one hand on the auger, try and keep it as away from the blades as possible. Okay and then slowly roll the auger out. Once you've completed that, put the auger somewhere safe, place your safety glasses on and clear out the hole. Okay. And that concludes the safe use of a handheld auger. Okay, so I've completed now with the auger, four holes on my log, one here, one here, one here and one here. I've got my four legs ready. Now I'm going to finish prepping my legs now using some other tools in the forest school. And the first one I'm going to be using is my axe. Okay, so again, check the ground and the area that you're working in. It's free of any debris. Okay. And any trip hazards. 
Second thing you're going to be doing then is you're going to be kneeling down like so, looking at the base here. So your legs are going to be missing the base here. Okay, let me move that camera down a little. Like so, so you're on one knee and you're missing the base. You're going to put on your safety glasses. Bring your legs and your materials back to your base. You're going to open up your hacks. Safety gloves on both hands. Okay. Now you're going to be using this axe in a downward motion away from your body. When you're using sharp objects, always make sure that you're behind the cutting edge and you're cutting in a direction away from you. So now I can get the first post which I require to cut. So this has got to be taken down now to the same size as the auger holes is in order for me to put these inside there. So they're my legs for my seat. Okay. So I'm going to be placing my hand, my arm, my forearm here on my knee. I'm going to be looking at placing the leg then on my workbench, my, cho my chopping board at a 45 degree angle and then in a downward motion I'm going to take my first cut. Then I'm going to move my stick, twist my stick in my hand and I'm going to be taking the shoulders off of each cut as I finish making them. This will give you a nice round should give you a nice round smooth peg almost to fit inside the holes. Always check to make sure there's nobody coming inside your blood bubble. Look around and be aware of your surroundings. And like I say, you're always using any sharp blade away from your body. Right, once you've done the heavy work like that and you've got the basis of your circle, put your axe away. Next we'll be using the bushcraft knife. So you don't need a glove on your dominant hand this time. And the reason you don't need it is because you are going to be needing to keep a firm grip on the handle of your bushcraft knife. So remove this bushcraft knife from the sheath. Remaining in the same position, remembering to keep the blade away from your body. So you're going to be cutting away from any of your body. Place your hand on your leg like so and then in a downward motion work on taking those edges off like so until you have what nearly resembles a circle to fit inside the holes that you've just used the auger for in your lock okay so you're always moving the blade away and this is quite a comfortable stance so it's not uncomfortable to kneel in this position. And what you should be left with after taking off of these edges, it's quite a circular peg. Okay, once you've completed your task before you move again making sure the blades away from your body place the blade in a sheath and place it back in a safe place so 
So next now, only thing left we have to do now is to place our peg inside our thing. So we're going to be using the hammer, a little wooden mallet. Using the mallet, a wooden mallet, and this will be used to hammer in the legs to my my log one down three to go okay I'll just pause this uh, just to add to the um, axe demonstration I wanted to demonstrate how to split logs with an axe um, so Again, this will require at least one glove and the same kneeling stance as before. Let me move that camera down a little bit. Okay. So the same kneeling stance as before. Again, making sure that you're at that angle facing the thing that you want to chop. Safety glove. Make sure you've got a nice clear workbench. Nobody's in your blood bubble. Place the block firmly on there and then place your axe straight down the centre. Grab your mallet and then hit the top of the axe with the mallet until the log splits. This gives you a lot more control when you're chopping and it also means that you don't have to hold the thing you're chopping up so you place the place the axe on top of it and then continue to hit the axe down through until you have your split and then you can continue doing this then if you're making kindling same principle side on okay Place your axe on the log that you require to shop, then hit the top, mallet, until your log is again split into the section that you want. Same thing again. Okay, and that is how I show my participants to cut logs up with an axe. Okay, so that's uh, four tools, five if you count the mallet, and demonstrations how to use them safely. And this is the end result. So I put the rest of the legs into our bench now. Only thing left to do is to try it out. So there you go, seems fairly sturdy to me. Ah, one seat. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.